Welcome to a new tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning how to cut bias strips. Welcome to the Learn to Sew Academy channel. Please remember to subscribe. Thank you. In this video, we're going to be learning how to cut bias strips to make your bias tape. You're going to need your scissors or a rotary cutter. You're going to need your tape measure for you to measure it. You're going to need a fabric marker and you're going to need your ruler. In my last video where I made this dress, I promised to show you how to make this bias strip. So I'm going to be showing you today in this video what I did using scrap fabric. I used this width in this project, but you can make your bias strip bigger than this wider than this depending on what you're working on bias tapes have different functions you can either use them to finish up your raw edges so that you have a very neat finish especially where maybe you have a bulky raw edge and you can't put that through your surgery you can decide to use a bias tape like i'm showing you this even though i searched this if you have a raw edge when you sew and you don't have a surgery and you want it to be neater or maybe you do have a surgery, but maybe this is kind of bulky for your surgery. Then you can use a bias tape over here. You can also use your bias tape like a decorative M, like what I've done here. I added bias tape just to give it a decorative neckline. So your bias tape have different functions. You can even use it to M the edges of your sleeve, like if you have a straight sleeve. So like I promised in the video where I made this dress i'm going to be showing you how i made this bias tape from the scrap fabric that i had now for this bias tape i used a length of two inches to determine what length you want you just first want to consider what do you want over here how much do you want to fold in like over here i have half an inch and then at the back is going to be half an inch that is one full inch and then to tuck it in, I tuck this in with half an inch. And at the back also, we've tucked it in with half an inch. So all together for this size, you're going to need to do two inches for the size of bias tape. Also to do your bias tape, you can either do what is called the continuous bias, or you can do one in which you cut the strips differently and then you join it together. So what I'm going to be showing you today is the one where you're going to be cutting your strips differently because for instance if you don't have a lot of fabric like it happened in that dress when i was making that dress i had just scraps of fabric left but you can still make your bias tape even from scraps so i'm going to show you how to make a bias tape with little fabric so in other words we're going to be cutting this and piecing it together and then in another video i'll show you how to make a continuous bias tape so like the name indicates you're going to be cutting your bias strips on the bias what that means is you want to cut it such that you are able to pull it and have it a little bit elastic like you can see here so you want to cut it diagonally that's how you're going to be cutting it your bias is going to cut this way so that that way you have that effect and why you need that effect is that because it makes it easy for you to go around the cuffs. In other words, your bias tape is something that is going to help you to sew around cuff edges. There are different ways you can do this. You can draw a line diagonally like such. Just put a sharp line diagonally and from those lines you begin to cut what you need using the length that you determine that you need you begin to cut it that's one way also you can fold it especially if you have enough fabric you can fold so that you form as much of a triangle as you can and you're going to start to cut from right here from the base of your triangle like that using the length that you need so i have made the first line diagonally now remember that i'm doing this based on the assumption that you just have scraps of fabric when you're working with your project even if you don't have enough fabric you'll know how to do this so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna measure the two inches 
and you keep doing that all across from the line that I made You go as far as you can. Go ahead and you can draw this line all across like that. Or you can fold based on this line that I made here. Right there. So that when you're cutting it, you follow this line. So in which case you have two inches here and you have two inches here. So you cut it at the middle point like that to give you two strips of fabric. And if you have a graded ruler you can also use your ruler to help you to see the two inches in which case you can just go ahead and use your rotary cutter to cut this direct but for those that don't have it i'm just going to go ahead and mark this and i'll use a uh, scissors to show you how this is made so now i'm gonna cut based on that line now cut this into two since i need Two inches and these two inches so I'm just gonna cut that into two so now I have two strips of fabric like that and because I use this scrap fabric I'm just going to trim this off so that it's equal to what I have for the top one now how to join the bias strip is very important the way you have it now I have it right side to right side you cannot join in this way because you're not going to have the right thing. If you join it this way, if you join your bias strip this way, you're going to end up with something that's going to be forming like a V. So that's not how to join it. So the correct way you want to do it is you take the right side facing up. Okay. And then you take the other one with the right side. So you're doing right side to right side. And you want to place them on each other like that all right and when you do this you have a little sticking out on both sides that's okay all right so in a way you can see i'm doing like like one is that way one is this way all right so they are crossing kind of but they are not extending or protruding out there so you have a little sticking out here and you have a little sticking out here so what you're going to do now is you're going to go ahead and you're just going to sew from there to there. You see where the joining, where this is sticking out, the bottom way is sticking out. That's why you start your stitches. You sew it all the way to the bottom here where it's sticking out. And this should give you a lot of continuous strip of fabric. I've used a non-matching thread so you can see it. So I just went from right there, the bottom of where this is coming out and then all the way here. And when you turn it, you'll see that it's going to give you that continuous strip of fabric. And of course, you can go ahead and press this down. You can use your fingers to straighten it. And you just cut the excess that's sticking out here. So this is a very simple way to cut your bias strip and you can just continue to do likewise especially if you have very limited fabric so this will work perfectly so i'm going to show you how to do the continuous bias in a different video in such case where you have more than enough fabric then you can opt for the continuous but if you have limited fabric or even if you have more than enough but you just wanted to make two strips this is a perfect way to do it for this sample here, I'm going to be using this neckline. So what I'm going to do is, it depends on each individual. Some will prefer to start the bias from the um, right side of the fabric and then turn it in. And it also depends on what you're doing. If you're just using it to tip your edges, for instance, like you will do in some blouses, if you want to just use it to tip the neckline without it showing out on the outside what you want to do is you want to start to sew from the right side so that when you do your bias strip you're going to be doing right side to right side and by the time you want to turn it you're going to turn it such that 
this is going to turn in and you're not going to have any part of the bias showing on the outside that is one way you can also use a bias tape so in that case all you will do is you will do your half an inch you will turn it in by the other half an inch and you turn it over like that and you just sew it all the way making sure that it forms a clean knit line in the front another thing you can do is you can aim it instead of stitching it that way you will have a neat finish without any stitch on the outside but what i want to do today is to demonstrate what i did with the dress that i made earlier where i used this as a decorative bias tape so i'm gonna start from the inside even as a decorative some may decide to start from the outside it's totally a preference thing when you start on the right side that means you're gonna finish it up on the wrong side so in that case when you finish it up you also want to make sure that your stitches are very neat so that when you look at them on the outside you want to make sure the stitches are very neat but what I'm doing today is showing you what I did when I made the six piece dress and I used the buyer as a decorative stitch because I use crafts of fabric I have this edge looking like this but when I'm going to start I'm gonna start from around here so that I have this extra I want to make sure that when I turn this around I have a full edge here to go around when I turn it around so I'm starting from the wrong side of the fabric and I'm just using my right side to face the wrong side because I'm going to turn this over and I want the right side on the outside when I turn it over so again I'm going to leave some fabric here you're going to sew this using the allowance that you left when you were cutting this mine is half an inch so I'm going to start stitching this all around this cuff edge which is why we have the bias it helps you to go around the cuff edges so we're going to start stitching now so now I'm gonna cut this I'm gonna leave a little part of it when I'm cutting around that much Okay. that's about half an inch to one inch whatever you prefer so what we're gonna do now is we want to now turn it so you turn it and then I'm going to bring this in like that and then I'm gonna fold it by that half I'm going to pull this up now one other thing that um you may decide to do that can help you especially if this is your first time doing it before sewing the bias tape you can decide to first fold this in by half an inch on both sides and then you iron it out that can help you to gauge where you start stitching when you start stitching it onto your fabric and then you fold it again such that those half an inch are now meeting and facing each other and they are equal and then you iron it again so that you get the crisp edge in the middle that's something else you can do so in this case i'm going to fold this again by half an inch and i'm going to make sure that the edge matches so you want to make sure they match well if they don't you want to fold this such that the edge will match well and I have something like this and then you start to sew along like that with your fold you're going to be folding it so this is what I did with the six piece dress I'll leave the link to that dress if you like to see the full video so now we're just going to start sewing and when you're sewing you're sewing at the very tip of your fold And again your bias is just going to make it possible for you to move around this cuff comfortably unlike if you go to the straight strip of fabric and at the end here I'm just going to cut this 
off so that I have about half an inch to one inch at the edge depending on what you want to do we're just going to do what we did when we started I'm going to fold it in you fold in your half an inch and then you fold this but you want to make sure that this line aligns properly so again I'm just using this for an example using this fabric here so I don't really have the edges done neatly over here just because I just want to show you how to do the bias and you can hold it with a pin as you continue to fold the rest and walk towards the end of your neckline or whatever other cuff surface you're working on and that is just what I did that is how you tape your bias tape onto your neckline or any other cuff surface that you're working on so I do hope this video has been very helpful to you please if it has remember to leave me a thumbs up thank you again for joining me I hope to see you in my next video I do hope this video has been very helpful to you please be sure to leave this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already please remember to subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications thank you so much hope to see you in the next video bye